Last time on The Great Ace Attorney. As a rhythmic <laughs> tinking sound the music box makes is definitely familiar somehow. It's almost like some sort of code. Uh. <laughs> the question is how to show that the tinking sound has a connection to this case. The newspaper! Well, today's paper, Council. The headline is Pawnbroker Perishes in Pickpur's Plunder. <laughs> Hardly supportive of your cause. Ah, uh, no, my lord. I was hoping you'd look a little further down the page. Further down? But I can only look at the top of newspapers. <laughs> Anything further down and I just have to cut it in half. They've got some very catchy headlines. Well, I can't read small I, print. <laughs> I, find, I find the papers such rubbish, I only look at the first page and then I throw them away. Although Minis if there's a page three, then I'm very interested. Oh, very cheeky. A mere communications officer couldn't possibly steal confidence confidential government information. <laughs> the, the, as the individual charged with sending the information, in what way could I possibly steal it? I mean, it's not as if I'm being given the information so I can relay it to other people, no. Besides, the sounds produced by that music box aren't even Morse code. Let me stop you there after Mr. <laughs> Let me stop you there, Mr. Skulkin. After all them years, you say? Do you mean to tell me that Mr. Graydon is an acquaintance of yours? We're the uh, sociable kind of baddies, you know? Uh, sure, let's say Graydon's an old China. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I'll an old friend then. <laughs> the jowl point. Oh, no. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know these men from Adam. Now, for the last time, stop trying to implicate me in your sordid thievery. Well, that's blooming nice, isn't it, you little turncoat? Fine, if that's how you want it, two can play at that game. We well, ain't never heard of this geezer before either. Don't know him from Adam. Ah. <laughs> <Same. laughs> uh... <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Disillusion Plays The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, where we play the games and do the voices. I'm Pete. I'm Sarah. And I'm Taylor. Nice. And just before we hop in, don't forget that if you do like what we do, like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. Do the thing. <laughs> yeah, it really helps us out. We like to read the comments. And as you know, the whole 50-50 thing, 50 people subscribe, 50 people not subscribe, it is true. It's still happening. <laughs> It is still happening. Oh, that's right. That this is the the whole thing here was that uh, Eggert's actual name was uh, was Milverton. Ah, uh, yes, it that was. What we had found out last well, time was that. Well, that's what we uh, that's yeah, what we're it's, suggesting. It, yeah, because it weren't it like it's Milver the, Eggert the Milverton something milk round or something. <laughs> I can't remember. The now. Milverton, yeah, and yeah, Skulkin. Yeah. <laughs> It seems like, uh, yeah, he might have, Mr. Hoity Toity might have had a not so shady, not so clean upbringing. No, it would seem. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. Tell me, why was, why, doing well, why is it that it was only at the mention of the name Milverton that you decided to interject? But, because I, well. <laughs> It weren't the happiest of homes that it came from. That one came from. Yeah, his old man that was struggling from? for money so much his wife walked out on him. Uh, she took the name Graydon then, see? But Ash will always be Milverton to us. <laughs> Milverton? So that used to be your surname, did it? Of How much you want to bet that Mason's last name was Milverton? Mm. Of course not. This is all bunkum. I have been a Graydon since since I was born. Do you really think you can rely on the testimony of these two thieves, hmm? You're a communications officer attached to the civil service. As such, your personal details will have been thoroughly checked at the time of your appointment. Unless they were falsified. It would be a very simple matter indeed to subpoena those rec records, Mr. Graydon. Are you threatening me? <laughs> well, it would appear that Mr. and Mr. Skulkin... I, I always want to say Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> it's just it just feels weird saying Mr. and Mr. But I apologize. Well, it's just weird. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a Mrs. <laughs> well, it would appear that Mr. and Mr. Skulkin's testimony 
has been reliable. Thank you very much. For once. I'm going to say it's very kind of you. <laughs> you were born Ashley Milverton, then. <laughs> Ashley. Is that... Ashley Goose, no, Mitt Ringo. Is that correct? It's quite funny, Dash. Very well. Yes. Ah, oh, told you. So Ashley Graydon was once Ashley Milverton. That information could change things. And could turn out to be extremely important. I wish that poor surname should have adopted his Nash. <laughs> okay. I guess we'll, we'll check him out. Let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Right bumper, please. Thank you. Let's have a look at you. A telegraph operator at the Central Communication Station whose last name was once Milverton years ago. He's a childhood friend of the Skulkin Brothers. All of a sudden, we seem to be up to our necks in a serious matter of national security. Although all this talk about interception of secret government messages is still just conjecture at this stage. It would explain a number of things, though, wouldn't it? The negotiation Ginny overheard on the omnibus two months ago, and the break-in at Windybanks. But the trouble is, it wasn't Mr. Graydon in the omnibus with Mr. McGilded. No, that was Mr. Mason, the brickmaker who was so horribly murdered. Hmm. If only there was some link between the two men somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but Mr. Graydon's testimony seems to be as watertight as ever. I wonder if the key to us making headway with the cross-examination here could be those two brothers. She'll have me paired up now. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> okay. How's your apple? Hey, it's not bad. Nice and crispy. <laughs> a mere communications officer. You reckon the uh, fruit monger will want his money back? Oh. Will want his uh, will want money for these? Oh no, no. I think I think he's uh, I think he's uh, past that now. He's he's a good egg. I suppose you give him for free. Yeah. Oh, he's like saints. Yeah, he's a, a couple old nice gents. Oh. Oh no, sorry. No, no, no. Let's let's try going through this again then. We need to press that statement because I don't think we have. I think we have. We pressed through everything last time. But it may that. change things now that we know the new information. Yeah. No, we won't have done because after we got to that point there, uh Ringo had the thing, so we stopped uh, okay. and mm, dealt with yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. So two months ago, in that omnibus, Miss Gilded killed the brickmaker and stole the disc. Mr. Mason was a single man with almost nothing to his name. It seems he lived an artist in an artisan quarter oh, some wait. years ago, but people there remember little about him. I do recall this line of dialogue. That doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't make much sense, though, does it? How would a humble brickmaker come to acquire secret government information? How indeed. A smirk. There must have been somebody else involved behind the scenes in all of this. Somebody who acquired the disc and gave it to Mr. Mason. In order to take it to the meeting with McGill to negotiate a deal. Hmm. Dear me. <laughs> you may have it in for me, sir. But I assure you, I have far more class than that. An old brickmaker from an artisan quarter and this well-to-do communications officer. If only I could find some evidence to link the two of them together. <laughs> if you have nothing more to add on that note, let us return to the witness testimony. I wonder if... Is it worth having a look... <laughs> that bloody face. Is it worth us having a look at the evidence again, just real quick? Uh, poor broker's ticket. I mean, we've got the cat. We've got some meow. text on it. <laughs> meow. And we, yeah, it's just the box. We've got the blood samples. Gina's representation papers. Today's paper. Mr. Windybank. And over here... Some That's about the, like, communications. The communications. Theme. Winston Churchill. Uh, autopsy report, it's not really relevant. Crime scene, not relevant. Floor plan. Unless Iris can somehow compare the two types of blood in the samples. Hmm. 
Ooh. That's a good one, isn't it? Hang on a second. So, Graydon. But, uh, but they've got, you know, they've got different, different blood, blood types. Because, mm. yeah, he's purple. Cause he's but look, look at them. I mean, they're both blonde. Yeah. I can see a familial resemblance. <laughs> I can yeah, see yeah. the family resemblance. That's got to be the angle it's going with. We just have to figure out how to prove it. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm wondering about well, looking Well, with, it. like, what the Skull Kid brothers have said, like, yeah, it's like, oh, well, Van Zeeks has said, like, Mason was, you know, poor, lived on his own. But the Skull Kid brothers have just said, oh, yeah, his missus walked out on him because he'd got no money. So, it's got to be a bit more can we... to... Uh. Ooh, look at that! It's totally changed shape just from one little button press. Well, that is what the button's for, you know. You're just like Hurley. You boys love pressing buttons, don't you? Especially if you don't know what they do. <laughs> no. Taylor. <laughs> Taylor, head Maybe. from gutter. We'll get arrested. <laughs> That's... I don't know what you're thinking of there. I just... I think what she said is true. Us boys? says the ten-year-old girl. Anyway, now that you can see that it really is a... No, sorry. Now you can see it, it really is a ter... ter <laughs> a terio... 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 That one. <laughs> a terio... A pterodactyl scope. Anyway, now you can see that it really is a stereoscope, can't you? I will say it. Stop cool. taking the wee wee. <laughs> like I didn't think there was any point in doing it. I just wondered if there was anything in it for like whatever reason. Just you know. Uh, some... I'm just wondering if the Skulking Brothers will like drop yeah. another like. Yeah, I think that's gonna have yeah. to be it. Like Mr. Graydon told you to do. You mean? I think we've done all this. Uh, no, we're not. No, we have. We yeah. have. I think. Yeah, last episode. So we're not going to read? Silly me thought he was just popping over from Atlanta after all them years, but the rotter had a dodgy job for us. Aye, uh, Ash? Uh, Enough! Why don't you baddies desist with the fiction? Uh, uh, Obviously, I don't know these men from Adam. Now... For the last time, stop trying to implicate me in your sordid thievery. Well, that's blooming nice, isn't it? You little turncoat. His fingers are clipping yeah, through his chin. Oh, 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 literally. Nash, <laughs> uh, Nash, I think there's something wrong with your chin, mate. <laughs> what? Oh, I don't know what you mean. Uh, no, no that, I'm, uh, not, I'm not going to say what I'm thinking because it's rude. <laughs> what? I'm just like, how did that pass the... the how, who looked at that and was like, oh, yeah, that's I, fine. That's fine. fine. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Oh, dear. Fine. If that's how you want it, you can play at that game. I ain't never heard of this geezer before either. Don't know him from Adam. Ah... Uh... Never spoken to him before in me laugh. Never even seen him. Never, Dash, never. <laughs> Good grief. Such a blatant lie will not stand in my courtroom. Well, well, all I'll say is this. And this is where we learn about the milk thingy, I think. Or was it the next one, even? So, so did you know nothing about this music box? Did you know nothing? We still don't know nothing. And we ain't planning on knowing nothing about it, neither. But two nights ago, you did indeed break into Winterbank's pawn brokery, didn't you? In your original testimony, you said that the door of the shop was ajar, and that it was like some kind of sign begging you to go in. But the truth is, you were planning to break into Winterbank's all along, weren't you? Uh, we were, Gov, we were. Right there. Because uh, that's what he told us to do. It was his plan! Hmm. And why was it Mr. Graydon's plan to break into Winterbanks that night? Did you not ask the reason? Well, um. Uh, he said the place was full of stuff worth nicking. That's what he told us before, and anyway. 
Today it was a load of cobblers, didn't it? I were best pleased, I can tell you. <laughs> you weren't, Ringo, you weren't. I'll remember, I could see the steam coming oh, from your I'm ears. Absolutely livid, that's coming out my ears and everything. <laughs> In any case, if they know the real reason, it doesn't sound like they're going to give it away. Hmm. Now they're not. Oh, that's why. Because it's like it's only meant for that angle, not when his face is facing forward. Yeah. Mm. And this is. Yeah. So, how did your little business work exactly? Well, every morning down our way, the milkman would come with his cock to deliver milk, see? If you stuck your empties out your front door, he would leave them full again, right? So we swooped in on the action, got people to sign up with us. We promised to deliver milk for half the price of the other geezers doing it. People couldn't wait to sign on the dotted line, and we were raking it in, we were. So, did you live on a dairy farm or something? Oh, Benny, are you off your rocker? We had nothing. We were too poor to have a farm. <laughs> Right. Yeah, what we had going was simple once you had the idea. We just switch them over, see? Our customers' empties were the full ones from anyone who wasn't on our books. A doddle, right? <laughs> I think you meant to say a diddle, and that's a crime. It was just an armless bit of fun, that's all. Uh, milking the general public in <laughs> such a fashion is most certainly not armless, as you put it. No, no, we had arms, Gav. No, we, that was how we did it, see? We had to have arms to do it. <laughs> <coughs> Gordon Bennett, for Jesus. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, it was him what came up with the idea. Ash is the evil genius. You mean Mr. Graydon? Hmm. So Ashley Graydon was once Ashley Milverton. Yeah. That information could change things. Could turn out to be extremely important. All right. The same kind of thing as yeah, before. Yeah, I guess we need to... Yeah, so we need to... I guess... I guess we're going to have to press through the opening bits again. Let me make a new problem. Let's see if it was a local... Yeah, because we, we... Yeah. Because we've already done that one. So let's do these first two again. Let's do it again. So, is this newspaper headline accurate? Government communications are being intercepted. How could I possibly know? What do you mean by that? Any important government communications are handled by high-level officers, by specialists. Oh, and this oh, is where his she... fan club goes off about it. General members of staff in the station where I work would never be entrusted with sensitive information. Oh, no, stop. Must say something. Stop. Oh, God. Let me oh, guess. I can't even say it the second time, can I, without you interrupting? Juror number five. We regular communication station officers aren't as lowly as you are led to believe. As a team of us, a team of us are responsible for setting up and testing the telegraphs used by the ministry. And Mr. Graydon is the team leader. That's fascinating. <clears throat> Graydon is a highly skilled operator. Stop. Currently in presence of idol. Stop. Hmm. So, you had access to the equipment used for these confidential communications, Mr. Graydon. Well, what of it? The transmissions are always made behind closed doors, so they can't be heard. And in any case, all messages are sent in ciphered. Normal employees couldn't possibly understand them. No, stop! Must say something! Stop! Oh no, this is going to be like that time when Sony saved the passwords of all the PSN accounts in plain text, isn't it? <laughs> uh, darn! It's just like that time. <laughs> Mr. Graydon regularly attends meetings with ministry technicians and the ministry communications team. He assists them in ensuring that there are no errors in important international communications. 
And he's received the top prize at the cypher cracking convention five years in a row now. For goodness sake, bloody shut up, woman. <laughs> That's fascinating. Graydon is highly skilled operator. Stop. Currently in presence of idol. Stop. Well, your idol would appreciate it if you'd keep your mouth shut. She should really pick her idols more carefully. I, I tell you, this lawyer's accusations are completely unfounded. I guess this is going to be another swimsuit with gravel thing. <laughs> mm. However, as the defense has just demonstrated, the music box is able to play a second disc simultaneously. Oh. Oh. Which means there's a possibility the device could, in fact, have been used to produce more code. Objection! My Nipponese friend forces me to repeat myself. The courtroom is no place for mere possibilities. Present the second disc of which you speak, or your argument is dead in the water. I... I just can't do that at this time. And may I remind the court that as the witness has pointed out, he was not the one in the omnibus with McGilded two months ago striking a deal over the disc or discs. Hmm, indeed. That was Mr. Mason, the brickmaker. Exactly. I had nothing whatsoever to do with it. So, as my learned friend appears to be persisting with this line of argument, I presume the defense is able to show a connection between the brickmaker and this witness, or perhaps he's going to do a little safety save. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. It would seem not he's not feeling, not feeling very confident indeed. <laughs> he's got me. I have to find a decisive piece of evidence here or it's all over. Well, this is annoying, isn't it? What are we missing, people? Poor McGilded. We've seen the other side of the thing. It's not helpful. Uh... Poor McGilded. That's the man you defended in court a couple of months ago, isn't it, Bruno? Yes, or rather mistakenly defended. I wonder what his name is doing on the back of this disc. That's a question I'd love to know the answer to oh, myself. I was just kind of wishing that they'd, I don't know, peel it off and look on the other side of it, maybe? Mm. Yeah. See if there's something else. Photograph of is Gina. It, have, we got, have we got anything for Mr. Mason? Like in the profile, does it say anything? The only thing we have is this blood sample. Uh, the profile, the profile. Hang on a second, sorry. Uh... Oh, I can't actually look at the profiles right now because because uh, when it for the court record it, it's the present screen, mm. and it doesn't allow me to switch. Uh, pawnbroker's ticket. Sorry, hang on a sec. The blood on it has been identified as Mr. Mason's. Yeah, which was a different colour. It's purple. Yeah, Graydon, Graydon, windowing, thrice fight Mason. Pawnbroker's ticket coat. On the coat as well. Yeah. I feel like we're missing something, like, obvious, probably. Hmm. I have no relation to the man. Is there anything in Cesato's notes? Do we... The little book, the purple book. Oh, well done, Sarah. You know what? I'd never even... Mason Milverton! Oh my god, well Sarah, done. yes. <laughs> well done, Sarah. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> Be like, right brave. In front of us. At least someone in this group is keeping everything on track. <laughs> Sarah. Our uh, only barely. Actual like, Susanna. I was just about to say this. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mr. Ashley Milverton. 
Tell me, why did you try to hide your former name from the court? Because I haven't gone by that name for years. It means nothing to me. So that means Mr. Thrice-fired is, is Jaddykins. It's, oh, it's Papa. <laughs> I've never heard that name before Papa. in my life. It's Papa. <laughs> now, I think I called that last episode. Look at me. <laughs> me, me, me. <laughs> no, I don't think that's the real explanation at all. The truth is, you had a reason to hide that name. No. Ha! How dare you! Oh, the indigestion's playing up again. <laughs> Explain yourself, Council. I have here the notes from the omnibus case, my lord. And as we all know, the victim, the man who we now understand to have been negotiating with Mr. McGill... Yes, Mr. Mason, the brickmaker. That's right, only Mason wasn't his surname at all. It was his given name. His full name was Mason Milverton. Mil Milverton? Do, do you mean to say Saints Alive? Da, 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 da. No, they're dead. That's why they're <laughs> Saints. Mr. Ashley Milverton. Is it not the case that the brickmaker, Mr. Mason Milverton, was your father? I, I, I don't... It, it was him. It was his pops. As I believe I mentioned earlier, your family history will have been thoroughly checked when you joined the civil service. And it really would take no time at all for the court to subpoena those records. I like to choose that Van Zeeks is like bluffing. Mm. It's like, it would actually take approximately a week and a lot of paperwork, but I'm hoping you don't actually know I that. really hope he falls for it because I can't be bothered to process all of that. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, you have been illegally acquiring highly confidential government information. Oh. And selling it on to McGilded in collaboration with your oh, father. Damn. Ah. <laughs> oh. A fancy pirouette while you. Oi! <laughs> Keep oh, your bleeding head on! <laughs> you nearly took my head off with your wavy arms! <laughs> <laughs> the new facts and evidence unveiled by the cross examination of this witness all come together to reveal the truth! The, the truth, you say? The truth, you say? <laughs> that you collaborated with your father, Mr. Mason Milverton, in illegal dealings with Magnus McGilded. By dint of this music box, you mean, Council? Yes. Stealing information being sent in secret government communications and selling it on to McGilded. Mr. Graydon concocted this elaborate scheme of using two music box discs to encode the information as, presumably, a safety measure against the information falling into the wrong hands. And a very effective one. I shouldn't have given the scheme any credence whatsoever. But the deal with McGilded went sour, and the brickmaker met his end. Yes, but before he was arrested, McGilded managed to temporarily dispose of the stolen disc at the pawnbroker. Then, having learnt of the situation, you appeared at Windemanx two days ago, in an attempt to recover the two articles McGilded had placed in pawn there. <laughs> but... You've rumbled <laughs> me. But that attempt failed. One of the discs was seized by the police, and the other you never found. So that same night, you enlisted the help of the Skulkin Brothers and broke into the pawn brokery. This time, determined to recover the second disc. Oh, are you suggesting that the second disc was inside the music box? N eh? Oh, we never knew nothing about that. On the night that Mr. Winterbank was killed. Oh, here we go again. Gotta get the use out of that picture. <laughs> The intruder to the pawn brokery touched one item in one item alone, the music box. 
This is rather ingeniously demonstrated using the two prints from the security camera, indeed. So, the question that naturally begs answering is this. Why was only that one article disturbed? The answer is obvious, because it contained the second disc which the intruder was desperate to retrieve. Since, if it were to fall into the hands of the police, it would be proof of high oh. treason. <laughs> yes, it would, <laughs> wouldn't it? That's very interesting that you say that. <laughs> well, Mr. Graydon, do you deny that all of this actually began on that fateful night two months ago? I deny everything. <laughs> everything, you hear me? Everything! I... I... I refuse to accept any of oh, this Oh, he's nonsense. bleeding. He's bleeding. Oh. I refuse to accept any of this nonsense. Hmm. Uh, sir? There appears to be uh, blood seeping through the sleeve uh, of your jacket. Blast! I knew I should have worn a different colored jacket today. What? Oh! Two nights ago, we know that three shots were fired at the scene of the crime in Windybank's pawnbrokery. One took the life of the pawnbroker himself. One struck the pouch around Mr. Sholmes' waist. And the final bullet... Bullied. ...struck the calendar on the wall of the shop, having first pierced the arm of one of the intruders. Mr. Graydon, that wound on your arm that you seem to be trying to hide, it's a bullet wound, smoke, smoke, isn't smoke, it? Smoke, 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 smoke. <laughs> He's got you now, me old China. Time to call it quits and croak, I reckon. It's a little bit different than like the little bits of like thievery and robbery that they've done, though. Mm. Like, oh, oh yeah, a little bit of a slap wrist and go to prison. No, 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 this is high treason. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. He, like he's he's in big trouble. Just a bit more serious. Tisk. I swear we don't want to associate yeah, with don't. him. Don't. We are thieves, but we're not traitors. Yeah, there must have been another Milverton that we did that built round with years ago. Uh, this geezer, don't know who he is. Don't know any Ashleys. I'd say that Milverton died a long uh, time ago, he Ringo. He did, go rest his soul. May be at peace with me granny. <laughs> <laughs> don't acknowledge my presence there under any circumstances whatsoever. Those were my terms. Remember... And I paid you handsomely to comply. Clearly, I was a fool to think I could trust some common backslum thieves. Mm. <gasps> Fine. I admit it. I was there in Windybanks that night. I paid this pair ten guineas to accompany me. And as you've noticed, I sustained an injury in the course of my adventures. Silence! <laughs> but that is all. I admit to nothing more. Stealing government secrets, negotiating with Mr. McGilded. <laughs> As if. As God is my witness, I am sure I recall nothing of the sort. He's not going to go down without a fight. Not until I can show hard evidence, I suppose. Nevertheless, the defense has now established a crucial fact. Which is... Which is... <laughs> Strange voice. Well, we know that one bullet was fired from each of the two firearms we have in evidence. The bullet from the Skulkin Brothers' gun hit the pouch around Mr. Sholmes' waist. And the bullet from Mr. Winterbank's gun clearly must have been the one that caught Mr. Graydon on the arm. Indeed, it must. We can rule out the possibility that the man shot himself. So Gene is in the clear. And that leads us to only one conclusion. 
Mr. Windybank was shot by a third gun, which can only have been fired by the third intruder. Goodness. <clears throat> That's right, Mr. Graydon. Gah. The only person who could possibly have shot Mr. Winterbank that night is you! Oh. Hold it! <laughs> you little upstart. You've made a grave mistake when you summoned me here. <laughs> uh oh. What? What's that supposed that to mean? That doesn't sound good, guys. <laughs> hey, you put me in the bloody face again! Will you watch when you're waving that thing? Would you fucking bloody well, mate? <laughs> you never heard the personal <laughs> space, you <laughs> numby pumby gutter snipe? Yes, as you rightly say, I was I was there at the pawnbrokers. I is this Kane? The I gun? did my oh. best to hide the fact, naturally. Yeah, they made a big thing about it not being a proper cane because it's not got the little brass covering on the bottom. Oh, have we, have we, have oh. we spoiled the end already? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I had no intention of ruining the distinguished career I'd built for myself at the communication station. But did the thought... <clears throat> but did the thought never cross your mind? Did you never consider the possibility... What? What do you mean? What, that male is involved in this? Mm. What thought? What possibility? The possibility that if, that if I was there at the scene, I may have witnessed the crucial moment. You see... <laughs> this makes me a key witness in this case. And I have my hands firmly around the neck of your client. Uh, might I remind you that that is attempted uh, murder, and you <laughs> is a serious offence. What? Oh, uh, uh, are you suggesting? I saw it all. I saw the very moment that pickpocket girl pointed the gun at that poor, defenceless pawnbroker and shot him. Oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> the facts of the case don't even support that. Are you kidding me? Jesus Christ. Order! 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 Well, it would seem we are finally entering the last, the last act of this theatrical trial. Your Honor, this is ridiculous! Van Zeke has gone on and on about how the courtroom isn't a place for possibilities! He has no facts to corroborate this! This is an outrage! Mr. Graydon. <laughs> Sorry, it's like, yes? I trust you are fully aware of the implications here. If it is shown that your claim is false, you will have incriminated yourself as the killer. Hmm. Moon voice. <laughs> like, hmm. I was going to say that yeah, someone yeah. like this <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Oh, I understand fully. Then I must ask you to give your formal testimony once more. You will explain to the court precisely what you saw at the moment the defendant allegedly shot the victim. Oh, gladly, Your Honor. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. <laughs> that, again? <laughs> Why are you thumping me, Chesno? You're not gonna last through the testimony if you keep invading my <laughs> personal space. If you're that desperate to steal my chips, why <laughs> don't you frickin' ask? <laughs> Listen, the only thing that I'd consider the red putting on my chips is ketchup, not your bleeding bloody arm. <laughs> <laughs> Get your blood off my chips. <laughs> <laughs> While these ruffians were jostling with the broker, I I was still near the entrance to the shop. When Windybank threw Nash over the counter, I felt a sharp pain in my arm. I pursued the man, but he shut himself in the storeroom. I could see him through the peephole in the door, though. The accused in the black coat shot the man in the back in the back as he was trying to flee to safety. Wait. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Did, did, did I just hear that right? 
He's trying to say that Rhea Noske shot him. Oh, no, 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 no. Gina. No, no Gina. sorry. No, no, no. no okay, no, no. sorry. It's because Rhea Noske was there and was wearing a black coat, and I'm sure he was mentioned. He was described. That, that last slide doesn't make sense either. He accused in the black coat. Gina shot Because she wasn't letter, wearing a black coat. Gina was in the coat. Yeah, she got it back. Yeah, she was wearing the coat. But she was already in the room. That's the problem. That, yeah. Like he's saying that she he shot yeah. she shot him in the back, but he, she was already in the room first. Yeah. I saw the blood splatter all over that wretched girl. Ah, but we yes. have the coat, and the coat doesn't have the that blood splatter. Then on. she tossed the gun out of the peephole, so I picked it up and made my escape. Well, she can't have because she was holding it. She what? was holding the gun. Good, good, good gracious! This. This is quite extraordinary testimony. Hang on a second. If by extraordinary you mean testing the bounds of fiction, then really yes. Flawed. The gun isn't in his isn't in the picture. Okay. We can't use that. It's all right. Just thought. <laughs> I may be a genius communications officer, but well, you know, I mean, I I've also considered myself a writer. Perhaps I will, uh, you know, create a new book. About Ash Graydon stock. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could remember a quote from it. My mind's just gone completely blank now. <laughs> no, no, no. Is it, is it the follow up to uh, Monsieur Le Coq's pop up book? <laughs> <laughs> you claim, sir, under oath, to have clearly seen the defendant pulling the trigger. Oh, I guess that wasn't a question. Order! 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 Oh, my. It wasn't my intention to testify in this way. But neither is it my intention to be found guilty of a murder I didn't commit. So, you see, my hand has been forced. I'll tell the truth now as an act of self-preservation. <gasps> the truth! Until now, the prosecution was completely unaware of these details. Uh, yes, well, um, sorry about that. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> Having shot me in the arm, the pawnbroker was then shot in the back by the accused. Oh, it's poetry in motion. As I said, she was showered in his blood. You say the blood splattered all over the accused's coat. Are you sure on that point? Now, what color was it? It was purple, purple wasn't it? Because that's Mr. Mason's. It was purple. It was Mason's, yeah. Because it's on that. We don't have the Oh. Oh, of course we don't have the coat in evidence currently. That would just be too easy. Oh, yes, quite sure. All over the black overcoat that pickpocket girl was wearing at the time. Really? If her coat could somehow be shown to harbor vestiges of blood, that would be conclusive evidence here. I say looking directly at the camera and giving a knowing wink. <laughs> hmm. Yes, well, indeed. Such an investigation is entirely possible, my lord. Is this, is this going to be hard? Is this going to be hard what? to prove? Because they're like, oh, we don't like that science stuff. And the only way you <laughs> yeah. can prove it is by that science stuff. <laughs> only very recently, a German. <laughs> Excuse me! Excuse me! I love it. Excuse me! <laughs> is the, yeah, is the German scientist called Sherlock Holmes by any chance? Not oh, Herlock. No, Jones. they're gonna come after us. No, 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 that's what I mean. No, no, that no, one, that, I mean, like. <laughs> that one is Erlock Sholmes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yes! no! Oh my God, that would be perfect if it that, is. Oh my God! Please say that's it. Please say that's it. Please. <laughs> that would be that would be funny. That would that, be that funny. That would, that, well, not funny. I, know, I guess like sort of properly eye rolling. Only very. <clears throat> Only very recently, a German scientist has discovered, developed rather, a technique to identify human blood. 
Yeah, they just inhaled some saliva. Jesus. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so here's to true science. Not some amateurish detective's dubious foray into the world of chemistry. There's nothing dubious about Hurley's work. His ideas are all sound. He just fumbles around about a little bit at the execution, that's all. <laughs> ideas are no use to us here. In science, as in law, theories must be proven before they stand. Unless they're a theorem, in which case they don't have to be. But I'm sorry, did you hear something? I feel like I heard something. In Germany, the technique has already been employed in the courtroom as, a base, as the basis of evidence. Scottish Yard has a small quantity of the chemical reagent used, with your lordship's permission. Oh, this, yeah! is, this is going to be annoying as yeah, it's going to prove there's blood on the jacket, but not whose blood it is, and then she's going to be guilty. <laughs> we'll have to see, won't we? Because I don't well, think... No, 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 no. We, we just prove... Um... Oh, I was going to say... No, but they don't, them... like, they don't believe Herlock's... Right. Like way of testing for blood. This just sounds like, oh, it tests for a presence of blood, so but not Masons. necessarily whose blood. What blood do we have? We have Masons on the thing. We've got, uh, we've got, Gar uh, G oh my goodness, Graydon's on the music box disc. And on the calendar and the samples. Yeah, no, but the samples are irrelevant. What I'm saying, mm. what blood do we have access to now? So it's just that and the music disc, isn't it? And then I guess Gina's yeah. coat. But we don't have any of Windybanks. No, it's just in the samples. Jeez. Hmm. Oh, it's never going to end. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. We could shatter all vestiges of doubt within minutes. Hmm. You don't have to shout, Mr. Van Zeeks. This doesn't look good, Runo. Why well, not? We know, don't we? That there's blood all over the front of Ginny's coat. If they test it with their chemicals. Oh, help! You're right! I was forgetting what happened yesterday. Let's just have a look a sec. Green, green, purple, blue. No, we don't have anything else no. that's also blue. That no. could. Yeah, okay, okay. So we could sort of link them together. Unless that is how we do it. I don't know. No, because, I mean, they don't believe about that this is legitimate. But yeah, I wonder if they would... I wonder if it's going to be along the lines of... We see that there's... Um, oh, God. We see that it turns, like, a different colour or some different thing. Some in, I don't know, some other colour scheme... Mm. Compared to these, I'm like waving my hands around like you can see it. <laughs> you know, some different color scheme in the blood samples. And while we can't prove that it's sort of his, um, we can't prove whether it is or isn't his, but we can sort of go, look, these go different colors in the same way that these others do. And we can prove that these two were the same color in this, <laughs> with this solution. So, well, I suppose we don't actually, we don't have to convince all we have to do is convince the jury, and the jury already believed us about it before, so maybe. Iris just gets out the gun and fires it straight at uh, Graydon's arm, like, right, okay, three three times the charm, shoots his arm, and it goes bright green. Do you know, do you know what, though, actually? Your idea of... That's it. That that's the that you've just you've just done it right. That that's backs if it up. Lets us, no, the that's game would no, no. To... That backs up what I was just saying. If they use the new chemical on Graydon's arm, we find out what. Assuming it goes like a color or something, it'll go whatever color, and then we can corroborate that with the music box disc. Then we can say right. So these two things are the same color. Well, let's look for a pattern in the blood samples portfolio. We know that the music mm. box disc is green and the calendar where the bullet went, you know, landed yeah, yeah, is yeah. also green, showing that they are also the same colour as in it works. The solution well, works yes, just I a guess, different colour yeah. scheme. I so guess. from that we can suggest that it's not 
the same. Like the, because obviously they might be different colours, but they will work in the same way on the same principles. So that way we can. Well, sort we've of... just we've just got to hope that the, this this chemical turns them colours. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I'm I'm just yeah I'm just sort of. <laughs> yeah, but if that's the case, then think, yeah, that that's going to be like I right. Think... Okay, you you approve this German scientist, right? We basically done the same bloody yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like that's going to be the sort of the final boss of yeah. this in a sort of. Ha! <laughs> <bloody thing. laughs> Don't move, Ginny. I'm going to shoot. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Go, Betty. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's how we get the pattern. Because I was thinking we don't have two things with Graydon's blood on. But that's not Mr. Windybank's blood. That stain is from two have months ago. Two things of Graydon's blood because yes. we have the disc and we have him. Yes. His <laughs> coat. So yeah. That's Mr. Mason's blood from when he was stabbed by McGill, who was wearing the coat at the time. My lord, the defense objects to the test proposed by the prosecution. No, 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 overruled. Oh, damn. Lord Van Zeeks, make it so. <laughs> <laughs> make it so, at once. Already, my lord. With pleasure, my lord. In fact, I have it right here with me right now. I've been drinking it this whole time. Oh, my God. <laughs> And while we await the results, the defense may proceed with the cross-examination. Uh. <laughs> ah. Once they find that blood in the overcoat, Gina will be... Cancel. Yes, my lord. No cross-examination. Uh... I have of course, my lord. left to cross <laughs> or examine. <laughs> oh, well, that was easy. If this cross-examination doesn't go well, if I don't manage to uncover some decisive evidence or a really compelling clue now, I have a very bad feeling about the outcome of this trial. Is this is, is this going to have, like, two endings? Is it going to have a bad uh, ending? I mean, it might do. The earlier games do. Uh, so, while these, ro while these ruffians were jostling with the broker, I was still in the entrance of the shop. When he threw him over the counter. I guess we're going to have to press through everything. Let's go. Let's go! I thought he threw Ringo over the counter, not Nash. Yeah, he <laughs> threw Ringo over the counter. Yeah, th Yeah, this is... Mr. Winterbeck emerged from the storeroom, I believe. Ringo and Nash were scouting the ca scouring the counter when he suddenly appeared and flew at them. He already had the revolver in his hand. Fortunately, I wasn't too close. I'd never been so scared in all my life. Yeah, we were just your regular mind, mild mannered burglars, that's all. We turn light violence. Says the pair who carry a gun. What do you mean when you say you were near the entrance to the shop? I was in the doorway, running my eyes over the shelves of forfeited items. Looking for the music oh, box, no, of no, course. No. Hmm? The broker went for Nash. The broker went for Nash in the first place. Then Ringo joined in, making it two against one. So I assumed they could handle the situation. Well, you say two against one. I mean, one and a half. <laughs> but I was wrong. Psst. I was trying to help me little bruv, but the old geezer chucked me over the blooming counter. Oh, so there we go. So I pulled me gun in the old fellow. That soon made him scarper. The pair of you sitting upon the poor defenseless pawnbroker together. <laughs> Shame on you. Oh dear. Sorry, Gov. Sorry, Gov. You mean that's the moment you were yes, shot? Though I didn't immediately realise what had happened, of course. Things crashed to the floor from the counter as the three men were brawling. It was exactly it was at exactly that moment that it happened. So I didn't hear the gunshot, even though guns tend to be pretty darn say, loud. How the hell did you not hear the gunshot? Obviously using one of those fandangled silence thingies. Uh. And the bullet went on to strike the calendar in the wall behind you. So it would appear. When I looked at my arm, I saw it was bleeding badly. So I wrapped my handkerchief around it. Seeing as I couldn't explain what had happened to a doctor, 
I had no choice but to wait for it to heal. I didn't imagine it would still be bleeding two days later. Although I do keep flailing my arms around, so... <laughs> did, <clears throat> did Mr. Windybank intend to shoot you, do you think? Well, now, I don't imagine he even noticed I was there, to be honest. I was doing my very best to stay hidden in the shadows in my all-white jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps the gun went off accidentally. Anyway, it didn't, it didn't quite strike home. When I pulled me gun on him, he tried to shove me out the way. And through that door right back. At which point, at which point, what did you do? Yeah, I pursued the man, but he shut himself off in the storeroom. Hmm. You mean you chased after him? I don't recall the reason why, but I ran after him to the back of the shop. And what about this peephole in the door you mentioned? Well, unsurprisingly, the storeroom's a solid. The storeroom door is a solid job made of stout wood. Oh, I forgot you were there, G <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gregson. Well, there's a small opening in it about head height that lets you see what's in there from the outside. Actually, I should know oh, that, shouldn't I? <laughs> I looked through it <laughs> myself that night. I'll do it. <laughs> Gina! <gasps> Gasp! Oh, no. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and what about you burgling brothers? Did you see what went on through this peephole as well? They not lastly, Gav! I doubt these two buffoons were even aware of the peephole's existence. So the Skulkin brothers were there, but they didn't see the killing of Mr. Windybank take place. Hmm. Inside the storeroom, I could see the broker and that young thing. Standing there. Oi, this thing has a name, you know. <laughs> the defendant? Yes, though neither of them noticed that I was looking. The girl raised her gun and pointed it straight at the man. And then? What did you see next? The accused in a black coat shot the man in, a b in the back as he was trying to flee to safety. That doesn't make any sense, that one. Yeah, I was trying to, I was just thinking if it sort of added up with the evidence that we have, but like, we rec if you recall the idea of him being shot, uh, you know, the bullet traveling up through his back and out his shoulder, uh, what was it? It was sort of proved that if he was running away, he'd be leaning forward. Mm -hmm. So that could sort of make sense still. So it, it's still okay for now. Yes, when the, when the crime was discovered, the defendant was found with a gun in her hand. But that was Mr. Windybank's gun, from which only a single bullet had been fired. And as we've already established, Mr. Graydon, that yeah, bullet exactly. was fired at you! Oh no. Ah, but no. It wasn't the pawnbroker. It wasn't the broker's gun that the pickpocket girl had when I saw her. Yes, the bullet from Windybank's gun grazed my arm. And yes, the Skulkin's gun ground the de grounded the detective. <laughs> but this was another gun entirely. A third gun. So you're saying that from within a locked room, she got a, a third gun, shot him with it, then somehow lost it in that room, grabbed the yeah. other gun, and then passed out. And, like, the, for and real? the police inspector for did real. a really terrible job at finding said third gun. Exactly. <laughs> oh, oi, 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 what are you saying, though? That sounds that sounds a, bit a, little, like... a little bit like slander. <laughs> <laughs> the broker's gun was not the murder weapon, so clearly there had to be a third firearm involved. In other words, the accused must have had her own gun with her at the time. If she had, why the hell did she need to pick up windy guns? Wind, windy, gun. <laughs> windy guns oh, bank. Objection! <laughs> but no other gun was found windy at the scene! <laughs> yeah. Windy Bank's gun, if she had her own gun. <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
Windy Guns Bank brokery. But no other gun was found at the scene. <laughs> uh, calm yourself, Council. Sorry? You must consider the events in order. At first, I saw the broker and the girl glaring at each other. But then, all of a sudden, the broker turned to run. And it was at that moment <gasps> that the little gutter rat shot him in the back. A chilling image, I must say. Hmm, where's my applause? <laughs> Sorry, right, I was just thinking for a minute, but okay. All, all over her? Yes. Through the peephole, I saw it clearly. Of course, the stains are invisible now, what with the coat being such a dark colour. <laughs> but I assure you, that garment is sullied with the victim's blood. Well, it is so. Again, I don't even understand this. Because he's saying that he fled and she shot him in the back, but if, if he was fleeing into the storeroom, how would she have gotten splatter with the blood to begin with? And then how did she get into this? This whole well, thing well, just doesn't make it's any sense. It's obviously using the anime blood gushing rule of like when shot, like blood just sprays out. Uh, you know, as if we're all. As if blood is inside us with like high pressure ready to. Like, yeah. But he's also saying he saw them through the peephole. But if he saw them through the... <laughs> I just don't like it. Well, it is we just need to find blood, the that's for we'll sure. Get there. Oh. Why? Why did you Bet laugh? it's not Mr. Windybank's blood, is it? Why did you laugh, Sarah? But is it or is it not Mr. Windybank's <laughs> blood, as I imagine so what when she's I about said, to say next? <laughs> we just need to find a hole. And then she went, oh. Not because not because sex joke, but because we've run out of time, haven't we? Both. <laughs> Son of a biscuit. <laughs> so if someone else wants to do the outro, so I don't get victimized by this. You've not been victimized. <laughs> Why? Are you, what I is... feel like I'm being. No judged. one's victimizing you. <laughs> anyway, yes. Once again, sadly, we end on another cliffhanger. We but always end on cliffhangers. That's kind of our thing. <laughs> but if you do like what we do and you want to tune in to find out what happens next time, why don't you like, comment and subscribe and ring the notification bell so you're notified of our video uploads every Wednesday and Saturday. Yeah. But until next time, we'll see you around. Yeah. Take care. And remember, your scientific discoveries don't count unless a German scientist has discovered them first. <laughs>